This is best friend of the show, Monica Cabina, artist and colorist on Batman The Adventures Continue. And you're listening to the DCAU Review, hosted by Cal and Liam, streaming at DCAUReview.com and on your favorite podcast app. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another bonus episode of the DCAU Review. I am your host, Cal, and with me, our other host, my good friend and good brother, the gentleman that is in charge of our Twitter account. That's right. It's Liam. Liam, welcome to another bonus episode. This week, of course, we are dropping so much content. Um, We are dropping so much content this week. And uh, we have uh, another review. Not only are we dropping our review of Justice League Infinity this week, but you and I are now discussing our review of the latest issue of Batman The Adventures Continue. That is right. We are discussing issue number six of Batman The Adventures Continue season two. Only one more to go after this month. Uh, been a been a heck of a ride so far. And we've got the next exciting chapter as we uh, sort of race towards this conclusion, this mayor mayhem story that started uh, last issue and uh, is sort of being continued here and will be continued into the final issue in issue seven. But uh, yeah, it's, it's a lot to get into. And not only do we have this mysterious May, May, Mayor Mayfield, who we learned about had had these past dealings with Batman and was the former mayor who sort of resigned in disgrace. Um, we also learn that, uh, that he's back in town and we were sort of theorizing as to why exactly that could be. And uh, we for sure get our answers <laughs> in this month's <laughs> issue. And we also not only see Mayor Mayfield, but we see a few more uh, familiar faces in, uh, in Batman's rogues gallery as well, including, well, really the most important one, but we'll save that for a little bit later. <laughs> I don't know. You can't lead with a spoiler like that. Come on. We, we, they already know. They know he's in the thumbnail, probably right. <laughs> definitely, he's definitely thumbnail worthy. I don't care. I don't. He would be regardless, even if it was just a mention. I would probably put the. I would put the uh, put the word bubble up there or something. Like that. That's right, Mister Wing himself as is returned in this uh, and this this uh, issue, and we are we are just blessed by his presence. That's uh, you know, just, a long national nightmare is over. <laughs> We get a little bit more Mr. Wing, and in fact, we get a little bit more list Mr. Wing lore uh, as well. As uh, I'll... <laughs> it's a very brief scene. He's in like literally two panels, but he mentions John Wayne, so that's another <laughs> that's another thing that we can make memes out of, and that's really all I require uh, when it comes to Mr. Wing. It's just an, a little nugget of info about this guy that we can <laughs> turn into uh, some sweet, sweet content. <laughs> If you haven't, if we haven't done so already, there's definitely Mr. Wing like wearing a cowboy hat already <laughs> uh, in, or on your Twitter feed. So follow us at DCAU Review. But as we get into the actual content here, Liam, as we recall last last issue, if you recall, uh, which you can hear in the archives at DCAUReview.com, as you can with all of our reviews of this Justice League Infinity and season one of Batman The Adventures Continue. But uh, we had this Mayor Mayhem uh, that was returning, or Mayfield is his actual name, but uh, Mayhem is his sort of given his his nickname. And uh, we sort of learned his backstory last month. This month, we learned a little bit about why he's back and why he feels like after be- going away and sort of being forced to go away early on in Batman's career, why he's uh, suddenly got a little bit... Uh, uh, more bold in his uh, return and no longer fears Batman. Uh, as we learn, uh, as he starts his his campaign, it's interesting. We get a uh, a brief little backstory here. Uh, some some Dick Grayson. We actually get Dick Grayson appearing in multiple panels here in the story. Uh, and guess what, Liam? He grew his ponytail back. The ever changing. Uh, hairstyles of one Richard Grayson in this story. We saw the the full mullet at one point in this series when uh, when Mr. Templeton was was uh, was still on on art for the book. We'll certainly get into our full thoughts on art later. But uh, yes, we do in fact see a ponytailed Dick Grayson meeting up with uh, Hamilton Hill Jr., who we we find out they were they were old college buddies. Appear, they appear to have belonged to the same fraternity. How sure, old is why Dick not? Grayson? How old is Dick Grayson at this point? I don't know. Like, 
<laughs> Maybe we can't be that old because it's only well, it's 15 years since Batman started, but Tim has been Robin for less than a year. He's graduated <laughs> college, so let's say he was gone for a year. So he's like, I don't know, like 25, 24, 25 at this point. And how old is Jordan? Well, Jordan is 47 years old. But... <laughs> He's got the he's got the hairline of a 47 year old and ha- Hamilton Hill Jr. is at least like 10 years older than Jordan. You would think I'm not I'm not quite sure how they are uh, older than Jordan. Yeah, I'm not sure the uh, the ages there line up, but uh, allegedly they were <laughs> at, school at the same time. There we go. Maybe and... maybe they were just maybe Dick was a was a as a freshman and he was a senior or something. We, we don't know that. Yes, but uh, but we we get a notice here that uh, Hamilton Hill Jr. is looking for an endorsement from uh, from Bruce Wayne, and he sort of comes to his old buddy Dick Grayson to get that. Of course, Batman very dismissive of that. Bruce Wayne, he, uh, there's sort of a which I actually kind of thought was interesting, and uh, maybe would be an interesting topic to delve into in a further in a, in a maybe in season three or something. But he makes a mention that Bruce Wayne already has so much power and money and owns so much so much of the business in in gotham city that if he added uh you know political activists to his his repertoire he would sort of that that would maybe be a step too far and that that would be sort of taking taking a little bit of the decision or sort of influencing the people of gotham city in a way that he doesn't feel is uh ethical Inter- yeah that is an interesting thing he he that's where he draws the line um <laughs> He has I mean, a cosmetics company, but he will not. <laughs> you know? Right, aerospace. He were he he you know he he he's going to space. He's he's you know creating technology that impacts the the world. But he's a magic helicopter with laser guns at one point. Uh, I, I it's interesting that that's where he draws the line. But I mean, it does mirror somewhat of real life. You have plenty of plenty of people that have lots of influence that and that make lots of money that are asked. Uh, you have lots of them that go into politics, but you also have mm-hmm. have lots that draw the line at politics as being something that they're not interested in. Although I don't know that it's because they don't want the influence as much as, as they don't want the issues that come with being in politics. But we digress as we get back to our issue here. But yes, yes. it's certainly an, an, an interesting thing here as Bruce declines giving a uh, an endorsement to uh, to Hamilton Hill Jr., and uh, we decide that Batman, after seeing a news report, is going to go visit his old friend, uh, Mayor Mayfield, as he's officially announced his intent to run for, uh, I guess, technically re-election. It's re-election. It's not re-election as if he's currently sitting, but being elected again, I guess. So uh, and in this interaction that he and Batman have, there's a, there's a dialogue box. That Batman is sort of narrating the interaction and mentions that he seems to be uh, almost sold on the charm of Mayfield, but at the last second realizes that uh, it, he can't give Mayfield the time of day or even trust anything that he's saying. And there's sort of this switch that flips and he decides that he's going to, uh, he, he has to, has to get to the bottom of, uh, of what his, what his ultimate plan is and will at some point. And uh, in this point, we have uh, a new character, Miss Hanbury that comes out that we learn is sort of, in charge of running the mayor's campaign uh, and is also his live-in aide. We're not sure <laughs> lives at the house <laughs> where the, where the future mayor of Gotham city is, uh, is living. And uh, so she mentions uh, dealing with Batman and, and uh, the mayor decides that they need to call upon one of the many characters they have at their disposal. And he asks specifically for someone he's dubbed the actor. Yeah, that's uh, that that sort of leads us to a, a pretty fun action beat. First, of course, we have uh, Bruce Wayne and Alfred sort of discussing uh, the the strange influence that uh, that Mayfield has, and that even Bruce himself was beginning to buy into it for a moment. And 
So Bruce heads to the Iceberg Lounge to sort of try to get a closer look at uh, at Mayfield at this rally that he's holding there as, as we get the aforementioned Mr. Wing cameo as he's, he's been reduced to working for as a bouncer since last season. He's I mean, a man. I mean, first, I mean, first he gets kicked out of Bird City for being too radical and now this, like he's having a bad year and... <laughs> He's a la- he's a man of the people though. Like, you know, right. he's That's working right. his he's working his fingers to the bone. He understands. Yeah, you know? yeah he doesn't he doesn't look down on uh, on working class jobs like that. That's <laughs> you know part of his charm. That's why that's why I'd vote for him. But uh that's <laughs> But yeah, we have the sequence. We also find out suddenly that Barbara Gordon is working for the uh the Mayfield campaign and and she's able to get uh Bruce inside and uh and that allows Bruce to uh, to see Mayfield up close and to discuss things with him briefly and sort of hear this rousing speech that he uh, that he gives and a bunch of reporters sort of see Bruce Wayne there and ask what he's doing there, what he thinks of uh, the former mayor. And Bruce can't quite uh, seem to get his bearings and simply tells the press that he finds Mayfield to be quite extraordinary. And then sort of... Uh, <laughs> Well, again, we'll get more into art, but there's just an incredible panel after he's sort of tugging on his collar, telling, telling the press that he thinks is uh, t- that he thinks the mayor is extraordinary, and it just cuts to him just booking it full speed out the door, <laughs> running to <laughs> Alfred's limo, who's already there to like give him the business about what like what what just happened. What, <laughs> why would you say that? And uh, it's it's a just really funny sequence there, but. Yeah, Before, Bruce travels fast too because Hamilton Hill is already blowing up his phone. Also, not none too happy that he's decided to give this in somewhat pseudo endorsement to somebody that uh, the the mayor, the former mayor's son, was asking to uh, give to give an endorsement to, but declined. So, very interesting wrinkle there. Absolutely, and yes, as uh, as as that's going on, though, we see the bat signal in the sky, and Batman arrives to see. Uh, classic movie actor errol flynn <laughs> is uh is standing on the building and he and batman have a punch up and uh turns out uh errol flynn's pretty spry and uh pretty strong for uh, for a guy his age yes um, he's also he's also uh hydrophobic also apparently yes as they, as they fight down to the street level and a fire hydrant is broken open that is when the the mysterious act- actor uh, leaves as, as Batman is, is really not sure what to expect, but there does seem to be a little bit of residue left behind. And uh, we see Batman looking at a, at a monitor with in fact, a picture of who else, but Matt Hagen, AKA Clayface, who else would be the actor that Mayfield uh, would be talking about. And I think we'll talk more about his stuff in, in visuals here is, Batman goes and confronts Clayface in Arkham and is sort of accusing him, although the the guard is convinced that uh, that Clayface has not left his cell for even a moment and that there's no chance it could be him. Uh, and as that's uh, as that's going on, we see sort of uh, Barbara back at the Mayfield Mansion as she sort of wormed her way into the the inner circle by sort of letting it slip that she is in fact the police commissioner's daughter and so all of a sudden she's gone from being sort of a a low-level volunteer to being sort of part of this little inner circle and uh, she gets to do a little bit of snooping as as she notices a a specific locked door that uh, that she's told is is very off limits and uh that's uh, that sort of brings up our, our final few pages here is Batman's racing towards the mansion. And uh, all of a sudden Robin, who is sort of monitoring back from the cage notices that, uh, that the, the, the car's running a little sluggish tonight. Uh, looks like maybe Batman picked up a, uh, a, a hitchhiker along the way. And we in fact see that Clayface has been out of his cell and uh, he attacks Batman and they have a pretty dramatic confrontation in, at the Batmobile. Yeah, uh, in very, uh, very similar to that, uh, that famous moment in Batman Beyond where uh, Bruce realizes that uh, Terry is carrying a little bit of extra weight and ink mm-hmm. sort of pops out. Uh, very similar to that. Uh, it's, it's like poetry. It rhymes, you know. <laughs> uh, so, so we get that and an interesting uh, it, brief scuffle well it's not really a scuffle so much as batman launches clayface off of the batmobile into the gotham harbor uh in a in a smart move 
it's and basically then, what he does to Bane in the Arkham Asylum game. There you go. Exactly. Again, also written by Paul Dini. So yeah, he more poetry. Poetry, it rhymes. So uh, we then get Batman returning to Arkham to grill the uh, the uh, the guard that had sworn that Batman uh, that Matt Hagen Clayface had not left his cell. And in uh, so he at this moment starts grilling him and shaking him, and he he swears that Matt Hagen is still in his cell right now. And you see the 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 footage of the cell, and of course it is empty. And he says that he swears that he sees Matt Hagen, doesn't Batman? And that's where we kind of get the the final uh, page of our of our issue as Barbara has decided to investigate what this hidden wing is. Not a Mister Wing, by the way, unfortunately. Sadly, sadly, not a hidden Mister Wing or a Wing family. No, it uh, it turns out to be none other than who else would be uh, perhaps responsible for being able to brainwash people as, uh, as the characters sort of realize, Barbara also has realized that the charm of Mayor Mayfield, uh, the closer that she is to him, uh, seems to be stronger. And then she sort of uh, loses that uh, interest in supporting him the further away she is from him and uh, realizes that the mayor has been carrying this lion-headed cane the entire time. And who else would be in charge of mind control other than one Jervis Tetch, a.k.a. the Mad Hatter, who is revealed at the very last panel as uh, they, the three of them uh, attack Barbara and knock her out, leave her unconscious, uh, and sort of leaving our cliffhanger for uh, our, our next issue, So, which is titled, The Votes Are Tallied. So we are uh, interested to see where, where this goes. So uh, Liam, this is actually, what are we, this is the next to last issue, isn't it? That's right. We're one away from... Uh... Next month will be our final issue of this uh, this series here. It'll it's it'll be bittersweet. I'm I'm you know I'm hoping based. It's going to be interesting because this feels like there's so much to wrap up here, um, mm-hmm. and lots of loose ends that have not been really wrapped up from from this season. Uh, but maybe that gives us hope that some of them will be continued in a continued season three. We're not sure about that yet, but we can we can hope. But um, I would say that this issue. Uh, seemed to be last last month. I didn't love last month's issue story wise or artwork wise. We talked about that. There were some mm-hmm. issues this month. Felt a little bit uh, more fluid. It felt like the story for me, at least. I felt like uh, moved along. There was some intrigue. Obviously, they're dropping sort of the breadcrumbs that the characters are being influenced. They're not really sure why they're they're saying these things or doing these things. Um, they're not sure what this what this intangible charm is that uh, that Mr. Mayfield seems to have. And then to have the reveal in the final three panels be that it's, of course, the Mad Hatter. Who else would be responsible for you know swaying people's minds? Um, I, I liked it. I liked the issue a lot. I liked the story. It didn't feel like it dragged. I feel like the Clayface inclusion was okay. Um, it didn't add or take away to the story too much for me. Uh, but uh, of course, bringing back Mr. Wing was was huge too. Absolutely. I, I, I will just mention, and I don't know if this means anything, but as you mentioned, there's this assistant character, Miss Hansberry. And when uh, when Jervis, uh, when Mad Hatter is sort of revealed at the end and he he mentions her, Mrs. Hansberry is in quotes. So mm. I wonder if she also has a, a secret identity as yet to be revealed. Um, Interesting. I'm not not sure there. That could just be a, uh, you know, just a, a lettering choice there to sort of indicate how he was speaking or something or a certain inflection he was putting on those words but uh yeah i just i just saw that as well um and my other last plot point which kind of bleeds over into art is that uh mr freeze grew his body back you notice that <laughs> oh no there was a scene where the security officer is looking at a monitor with uh, and we see two face we see the riddler and we see a full body mr freeze with his big red goggles and a nora snow globe so uh yeah good for him grew his body back that's exciting that's a big revelation <laughs> kind of uh kind of buried the lead there uh, oh I kid. No. I kid. i'm not gonna nitpick this i promise but uh yeah there's plenty of good stuff that we'll say about the art in a second but yeah overall 
there's a, as you said, there's a lot packed into the plot of this as far as more and more, we're just now sort of understanding why Mayfield's returned, why he, you know, why he has this confidence, what, what he has in his back pocket. And in fact, who is sort of behind his, uh, his ability to control the minds of not just, uh, you know, not just people close to him, but seemingly entire crowds of people, um, of course, being the Mad Hatter. And then you get the Clayface stuff thrown in as well. They, they really jam pack this. There's a lot of there's a lot going on, and it's that's going to be quite a bit to do a, a satisfying conclusion. If unlike last year, there isn't a secret eighth issue, um, which uh, we we have not we are, we're not implying that we haven't heard anything about that. So as far as we know, this is uh, this is the end here with issue seven. So uh, I will be anxious to see how they tie this all together. Yeah, uh, it very well could be very similar to how we left things at the end of season one, where there are lots of loose ends that were intentionally sort of left open. Um, Mm -hmm. Hopefully with them being followed up on again, as we mentioned in the season three, uh, I would almost prefer things to be left open, even if there isn't doesn't end up being a season three, uh, rather than trying to jam pack a whole bunch of things in a, in a single issue, because that, that sometimes can just feel sloppy and, and, and like not, not be good storytelling. So, so you don't want the return of Jason Todd and the court of owls next issue. Um, maybe in a final panel where there's like a <laughs> meeting between a Talon and Deathstroke and, and Jason or something like that about the direction of Gotham. Lex City. Luthor and the muscle and, and Mr. Wang and Mr. Wang naturally. Yeah. Yes, or all the, top, all the big players, or we do a backdoor pilot for Mr. Wing the animated series. Yeah. We just have, you know, we have a Mr. Wing origin story for issue number seven, and that's all. We that's just all see we like have. Batman capturing Mayfield on like a TV screen in the background. <laughs> <laughs> it's why just are, all about why Mr. do we Wing. not run DC Comics? This oh is my the question, God. you know, this yep. is you, you really got to ask the universe some questions. <laughs> Can't believe we're giving this away for free. <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness! Uh, back on track here, though. So yeah, uh, I I guess ultimately, so if Mad Hatter is revealed here uh, as the baddie, and we get uh, we get the votes being tallied, what do you? If if you had to speculate, do we get Mayor Mayhem? Well, that's the interesting part here is that if next issue takes place like on election night. And they're, you know, the, and I believe we have seen the solicit for that issue, which implies that it's, you know, Batman, Robin and Nightwing working to free Barbara and to stop Mayfield. It's like, if it's already on election night and he's already sort of won over all of these crowds and they have mentioned that the, the mind controls only seems to work when he is within like a certain uh, physical space between him and the and the people that he's mind controlling but if i guess i don't i i guess i need to know does the mind control work through a television screen Mm. like because that that would be a wrinkle to this because if he if he can only do it when the people are physically close to him then maybe it won't affect the voters too much but if he's uh if he's able to sort of influence large swaths of people with the uh with the cane even through a television screen or on the smartphones, which everyone has. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, I, I do wonder if, if, uh, if he could uh, seal up a victory, um, even, even if perhaps the cane or the, or the mind control is ultimately taken away from him by the end of the issue. But I do wonder if that could be part of our, our, our sort of cliffhanger for season three is that, well, they stop the Mad Hatter, they take away his ability to mind control, but they were perhaps too late to stop him from becoming the uh, the mayor of the city. And and so, yeah, I will be interested to see how they sort of tie that up and and, and how they sort of delve into just how much control he has uh, amassed over the city. I will say that in the, the three panels that we see of the Mad Hatter, there does appear to be some sort of equipment in the room that he's uh, hiding away in. Could it be broadcast mm-hmm. equipment? Could it be something that amplifies the mind control? Uh, yeah, that's that's a safe, safe bet. So we'll see, I guess, ultimately what happens 
next issue. But uh, yeah, I guess we can talk about the artwork now, Liam, and the visuals. Uh, as, uh, so Mr. Rick Burkett or Burchett, however you uh, pronounce it, again, always butchering names here at the DCAU. <laughs> Uh, apologize for that but also of course best friend of the show monica kubina also responsible uh for some fantastic colors we also had josh reed as the letterer and uh we had of course written by alan burnett and paul dini we had two covers liam we had uh according to it's interesting because i think inside the comic book it looks like jorge uh jorge fornes uh, mm-hmm. and apologies if I'm butchering that name. And then we had uh, Yannick Paquette and uh, Nathan Fairbairn uh, with the variant cover uh, for the for the issue. Um, I would say uh, Mr. Jorge's cover is is just outstanding. Like it's a great shot of Batman on this rooftop with a uh, with a spotlight on him, and it says out. There's a giant sign underneath of him that says Outlaw Batman. Mm-hmm. Um, some very like uh, X Men Days of Future Past type yes. uh, l- uh, vibes to it. A very famous cover, not not one to one, but a, a very similar cover to that. Similar idea and feeling when you're looking at this this Batman with these post this poster uh, saying that he you know he's an outlaw with a spotlight on him. So I love that love that cover to start things off here. Um, but uh, on the inside, the artwork, if you recall, our last episode uh we had we had some we had some things to say um about uh rick's artwork and uh some of the things that we didn't uh didn't think were were good about it um but uh i would say that this month i don't know if if rick listens to the podcast if he does uh, thank you for listening. Or maybe he doesn't listen to the podcast and just has spent more time or whatever factors were <laughs> contributing to some of the uh, things that looked a little rushed or rough around the edges last month. Uh, this month, uh, I think, was a major improvement from what we've seen thus far from his work and was more akin, not not quite the same, but more akin to the classic work that we've seen uh, from him in past uh, attempts through Gotham Adventures and uh, other artwork that uh, we're familiar with him doing. Yes, uh, a lot less of the problems, specifically the ones that we talked about in both of his his first couple issues. He, of course, did the art for issue three and then came back for last month's issue, issue five. Um, which was it looked to me and again an untrained eye but you know an eye that has read a lot of comics over the years that there was either very little or or sort of a rush job done on the inking of the book that resulted in a lot of sort of uneven and sort of jagged facial expressions and sort of you know we, we just a lot of a lot of strange looking expressions and it just it did, did not look did not look necessarily like a completely finished polished comic book um that at least not that we're used to from a, a major publisher like dc putting out so um yeah i'm i'm very happy to say that i i have much fewer complaints in in that department it's still you know is it's different certainly than a uh than a a ty templeton or a uh or um, or some of the other artists that we've seen work on these comics, but it is much more akin to, I think, yes, if you if you imagine what a Rick Rick Burchett uh, DCAU comic looked like from years past, uh, this is much more. Uh, this is a lot closer to that and has a lot less of those sort of major issues. Um, and yeah, I think because don't you don't un action in this in this episode in this uh, issue excuse me but uh you do get the the very wacky sequence of of the actor attacking batman and you know throwing the bat signal at him and and then batman uh fighting him off and then of course again the this uh the scene with uh, clayface attacking him in the batmobile and and then uh yeah there's, there's definitely still some fun visuals there i think maybe my favorite visual also involves clayface it's when he first sort of goes to confront him in Arkham and uh, Clayface is sort of lounging. He's very cocky and, and arrogant. It's not really a, a side of Clayface that I feel like we saw too much in, 
in the animated series uh, where he's just, he's just so full of himself and so seemingly so proud that he's sort of one step ahead of Batman in this case. But as, as he's talking to him and he's sort of giving him this big monologue, uh, he's sort of, everything sort of ends in a, in some sort of pun that allows him to turn uh, shape shift his head into a different one of the, the Gotham city rogues. Uh, you know, he, asks, he mentions a big question and then he turns into the Riddler. Uh, you know, he mentions becoming twice as dangerous and then that turns into two face uh, and, and all of that sort of stuff. So uh, I do really like that sequence. That might be as the standout visual from, uh, from uh, at least from Mr. Burkett's side of things uh, in the issue. Yeah, I, I would agree. I think, um, again, Mr. Wing being back uh, was a huge, like, oh, yeah. seriously, it just made me happy. You know, I, I, I love that Paul Dini continues to write this ridiculous character <laughs> in, um, into into the book. And, uh, you know, even if if you and me are the only fans of this character or, or you know, and, and our friends at Watchtower Database, even if we're the only like four people in the world or five people in the world <laughs> that love Mr. Wing, uh, you know, I think that that's, that's enough. And we just can't get enough of this guy. Um, one of the things as, as far as some of this, some of the work that Monica did, you know, of course, another A plus effort from Monica, um, best friend of the show. Uh, but one of the things that I enjoyed that she did was if you notice, uh, Barbara is wearing a purple dress, uh, to the, uh, to this, uh, to the iceberg lounge, this, this Mayfield, uh, election event, which Mm -hmm. is a very classic Batgirl color. As we know, you know, the, the modern Batgirl costume is purple. The classic Batman 66 is, uh, costume is purple. So it's, it's a, it's a pretty classic Batgirl color. And then later on in the scene, uh, that Barbara is where Barbara is talking to, Bruce as she's sort of letting him know that she's, uh, you know, started to do this reconnaissance within the Mayfield uh, uh, re-election campaign. Uh, her room is also shaded in this purple color. So I don't know. I, I obviously we know that Monica is a huge Batman fan. Uh, so I doubt this is a coincidence, but the fact that she went with that purplish color for those specific mm-hmm. scenes for that specific character. Uh, I just love little things like that because it's, that's very much a bat girl color, even though her costume in the DCAU is the black blue and gold one. Um, you know, it's that character that that color is intrinsically linked to that character. So I, I love that. Lots of great, blood red skies of course throughout uh throughout i love the iceberg lounge scene also get some nice blues and some some yellows in that scene also um yeah just another another fantastic uh set of colors here as we go through here and it's interesting because it looks like we have a, a somewhat hybrid design between the the mad hatter also than than what we're it's not quite the new batman adventures design and it's not quite white the batman the animated series design it's a little bit uh a little bit of both i would say you do have like the white grayish hair that we Mm -hmm. saw in the new batman adventures compared to his blonde uh and and the big green bow tie but he's not quite wearing the full suit or coat yet so uh interesting look there also but yeah i i think visually this is a big step forward from what again what we saw last month um you know i think monica continues to uh in in my opinion monica's colors continue to sort of make some of the panels Mm-hmm. look a lot better than maybe they they could they could have looked again i will say though that uh, mr Burchett's uh artwork was again a lot a lot better a lot cleaner than it, than it was uh, in previous efforts so hoping that that continues as we go forward in uh in the next uh in the next issue yeah i think uh you know that that first um uh, that first page where batman sort of confronts me feel that is at his house there and you see you know the sort of the, the greens of the trees and everything behind him and then you sort of see him standing out on his deck and he, you see him sort of glancing behind him and you just sort of see just the brief sort of light uh, silhouette of batman sort of coming out of the shadows i think that's that's great work by by both mr Burchett and and by uh by monica on that and and sort of a lot of that you know anytime batman sort of covered in the, in the shadow i always think that's a that's a tremendous visual and it's it's cool to see that where he sort of emerges and 
again, I just that that shot is it's sort of a weird shot of Clayface lounging, but I like that sort of dichotomy of him lounging and looking all smug and Batman pounding on the glass trying to uh to figure out what's what's going on. I, I appreciated seeing that and uh yeah, the uh, the sequence there at the Batmobile where the uh, you know the clay sort of shoots out of the uh, the center console and is sort of in, engulfing Batman and Clayface pops out on the hood only for uh, you know we we see the the Batmobile to really take off and we sort of get this dramatic uh, double take from from Clayface as he realizes that they're uh, they're barreling towards a, a river. Um, I think that's a that's a pretty fun fun visual sequence as well and. Yeah, just that very final shot. It's you know there isn't a lot of background detail there. It's just uh, the three of them, uh, Miss Miss Hanbury, uh, Mayfield, and the Hatter, sort of standing over the fallen Barbara, and it's just this sort of uh, this sort of reddish background with the three of them standing over her very imposingly. I I think that's a really good visual and a really good dramatic way to end the issue. So yeah, um, you know while we may uh, we may. Uh, not have yet reached the heights of, say, uh, you know, Monica's work with uh, Jordan Gibson in issue four, or some of her work with Ty Templeton in, in season one, certainly, or even the beginning of this season. Uh, a market improvement on the on the pencils and ink side of things, and and some great work as always from uh, best friend of the show, Monica. So, a lot of good stuff and and some fun stuff visually, even if this isn't necessarily the most action packed issue. Agreed. Yeah. And, and I think that allows Monica's work to even stand out even more because that's not as distracting when you see, you know, pencil lines underneath of where the inks are or should be. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, I, I agree. Um, yeah. So very excited, Liam, uh, our final issue that we know of coming next month. So uh, yeah, lots, of, lots of exciting stuff as we, we head towards the final, uh, final, the conclusion of this whole storyline for this season, at least of Batman, the adventures continue. And we will of course be back again next month with that review. Uh, don't forget. You can also check out on the podcast feed this week. We also have the latest review of the justice league infinity comic where we talk about that that of course covers what would happen after what would have happened after the final season of justice league unlimited you can also check out our review this weekend as we mentioned of batman the long halloween part two uh, very excited to do that and uh liam uh lots of exciting stuff here happening in the world of the dcau of course you can follow us on your favorite podcast app and uh, subscribe to us, leave us a five-star review. Follow us on social media, both on Twitter and on Instagram at DCAU Review. And of course, if you would like to support us, you can head over to DCAUReview.com, check out our shop. You can also click the link at the bottom of, uh, listed on the bottom of your favorite podcast app that says support this podcast, or head over to the Pod Tower on YouTube and subscribe to the Pod Tower there and get content not only from us, but also our friends at Tim Talk and, of course, the Watchtower database. Liam, very exciting stuff coming up here. Excited to check out more DCAU content with you, as always. But until then, I'm Cal. And I'm Liam. We'll talk to you on the next episode of the DCAU Review. Bye-bye.